Hey guys, so we're going to look at some of the nine key differences between QQQ and VOOG. These are two very popular ETFs, QQQ obviously more than VOOG. Maybe you haven't heard of VOOG. I haven't heard of VOOG really <laughs> until recently, until I started doing some research and looking more into it. And uh, it's been gaining some popularity. A lot of people are looking into this as a, an alternative. Um, and we're going to go through some of the key differences as well as similarities. So right off the bat, um, what I see here is that, uh, well, obviously QQQ tracks the NASDAQ while VOOG tracks the S&P 500. So there is one key difference right there. VOOG is a slightly newer fund. Uh, it also contains more equities, more stocks, more holdings, you could say. Uh, QQQ, on the other hand, has performed better overall, as we'll go through. So we're going to go with each one of these um, details, but I'm just going to highlight some of the big major ones uh, in case you just want the gist of it, just the summary, and uh, move on from there. Um, that's totally fine. VOOG yields a higher dividend and also has a lower management fee. Uh, QQQ contains more assets under management in terms of dollar value, and uh, QQQ has a higher volume uh, in terms of total and daily uh, average volume, as you'll see a big significant difference uh, between these two when it comes to volume, as well as a higher Morningstar rating. Morningstar is uh, one of the most well-known kind of uh, investment uh, sort of sort of newsletters out there they've they've uh, grown since uh, becoming a newsletter they offer a lot more and um, their ratings are considered pretty valuable and i guess uh, to to investors out there uh, personally i look at uh, other things uh, more than just uh, what other people are rating them as um, but that's a totally different story but anyways so we're going to go through this plus a secret tool a secret tool that i find uh, that may be helpful to you that i'm going to go over as well so stick around pay attention and um, yeah find out what that tool is also if you want to check out the fact sheet uh, i'll just click on that right now it'll take you to uh, this fact sheet that you can download, you can use on your own, you can share it, do whatever you want. Uh, there's some clickable links here if you want a, a quick link and it shows the breakdown of, of everything. So I found this very helpful. I hope you find it helpful as well. And uh, yeah, feel free to use it totally free. The link to the article, in fact, is in the description below. If you like this, press the like button, uh, subscribe. I'll be putting out more information like this. So let's go through it. So the ticker for both of these are obviously QQQ and VOOG. Um, Vanguard is, it's operated by Vanguard, uh, this one here, and, uh, and, and QQQ is operated by, is run by Invesco. Uh, so you probably heard of it, Vanguard and Invesco. Over here, you can see the quick uh, chart over here. This kind of gives like a quick overview of how the, the two ETFs have been performing over this period of time up until now. If you want a full view, just simply click on full chart and uh, it'll take you down there. Um, now I'll go over this one in a little bit. This is a little more fun to use. So if you go back to the top here, you can see um, I recommend eToro. eToro is one of my recommendations to if you want to invest in any of these two. Um, obviously, disclaimer that there's no guarantees in any of these. Um, you know, past performance doesn't equal future gains uh, necessarily. And uh, you know, trading or investing is risky. You could possibly lose all your money. But hopefully, with this, you can you get um, better. Uh, you know, you can make a better investment decision. That's the whole point of this to put all this information out there and condense it all into one place, so you don't have to go looking around all over the place. I have multiple links. Uh, linking to other areas and other places that are that you may find may find helpful as well. So we'll go through that a little later. Uh, QQQ is the exchange that it operates on is Nasdaq, whereas VOOG is on the NYSC, the New York Stock Exchange. And um, yeah, as mentioned earlier, um, QQQ tracks the Nasdaq 100, so the top 100 uh, stocks on the Nasdaq. And uh, this one, uh, VOOG tracks the S&P 500, all the growth stocks or the growth companies. In terms of inception, so what I mentioned earlier that QQQ is uh, a lot older, or VOOG is, is a newer invest, uh, uh, ETF. Um, this one's been around since 2010, while QQQ since 1999. And in terms of the management group, uh, Invesco Capital Management for QQQ and Vanguard Equity Index Group. And you can go over some of these uh, things. In terms of civil similarities, though, um, in terms of they're basically similar in terms of sector. They're both in the technology sector. Um, the region that they focus on most is North America, primarily the United States. And uh, asset class is in equities. They're, so they're both in equities, uh, large cap equities, 
that are growth. So they're both in that kind of sector, in that kind of area, if you want to say. Uh, this one I like here, um, uh, not to be biased, of course, but uh, I like this one because it gives a graphical representation of the holdings. So I put the top 14 holdings on there and it shows the percentages of each one. So for example, Apple is the top one for both of these, uh, QQQ, uh, sorry, QQQ here, um, Apple takes up 13.35% of its of its holdings of its portfolio while over here 11.62 and if you click on the each one it shows a little graph here it shows how it's been performing most recently and I like this one and you can even change it to the daily uh, you can look at the monthly or the three months so I like this one it gives a quick little view of that stock itself right so if you do want to say invest in any of these you can have a quick look here and it shows gives you a good idea so I like that um, and over here shows the number of holdings and if you click on the holdings it'll take you to a page that shows you all of the holdings the allocation you can copy this um, keep in mind that this is subject to change so if you do want to check the most recent one you just click here and if you scroll down to the bottom you even here it clicks this is a source this comes ex uh, directly from both of the in the fun pages so if we click on source here I'll just show you real quick this will take you to <coughs> excuse me see this takes you to the home page of, of each one it shows you the holdings of each one uh, this is directly from the source itself I'm not kind of you know making this stuff up <laughs> as to say and um, the same thing for Vug as well if you click on that it'll take you to an external sort of um, page uh, this kind of breakdown here and um, yeah, same thing over here. This takes you to the source. Oh, source is not there. Um, but you can click on this, subject to change, and it'll take you directly to the page, the source itself, um, right here, which is Vanguard, right? It takes you exactly there. So I like that. Um, you know, it's all kind of handy there. It, if you need to get the information directly, you can definitely do so. And it shows the breakdown of the sectors. So over here, QQQ, most of it is in information technology and communication services as well as consumer discretionary and then they're all broken up here and if you just hover over you can see so it's, it's a little bit interactive for Vug again most of it is an in info information technology and healthcare so that's a little bit of a difference there these guys are more into healthcare well healthcare over here is a little bit less for QQQ primarily in healthcare consumer discretionary um, and energy well where QQQ energy is a little bit lower um, on there if it even is on there <laughs> um, yeah so in terms of geographic breakdown as we mentioned earlier they're primarily North American uh, United States taking up a huge amount uh, in fact the majority of it for the most part uh, but I also included some other interesting ones out here. Uh, for example, here, um, QQQ, 0.6% of their their equities or their portfolio is uh, in China, um, is in the Chinese uh, sort of region. Well, as with uh, you know, Vug, um, Bermuda seemed to stood out. That seemed interesting, 0.18%. So some, some kind of interesting differences between the two. In terms of year-to-date return since January 1st, uh, QQQ has made a, almost doubled the the return of uh, that of Vugs and if you want to see more detail you click on see more there you go and it takes you to an overall performance which I'll go over later our breakdown of, of different uh, performances which again I'll go over later if we go back up here there we go <clears throat> in terms of dividend though uh, Vug is slightly higher with 0.87 percent dividend compared to 0.71 no, not that much but still noticeable and this will be a little bit more once we get to the management fee which is right here so 0.1 percent compared to 0.2 um, it's almost double so you get a little more bang for your buck with Vug um, on the annual dividend but um, is that something important to you? Well, that's that's up to you to decide. That's that's for you to decide there. In terms of distribution, they're both the same. They both distribute their dividends on a quarterly basis. And um, the last payment date you'll see here is uh, roughly the same, not 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 too far apart, in fact, in both dates. Big one here is the volume. So you can, as I mentioned earlier, the volume between QQQ and Vug is significant. Uh, you know, the vo it's a big difference where you can see here QQQ has 76 million million uh you know in terms of the overall volume and on average it is trades about 57 million if i can do my numbers right it's 57 million 
per day relative to 180,000 and 161,000. Looks like the text here is different size. Does that, does that look like a different size to you? It does. Let me know if it doesn't. <laughs> Let me know if you notice the same thing. Um, but with that in mind, it, this is why traders are really um, in favor of QQQ. This is why QQQ is attractive for day traders, scalpers, because with more volume comes more liquidity, you get better pricing, um, you know, faster in and out trades, faster order ex execution and all that. VUG, I guess, is more so heavier on the investment side. So if you wanna do like long-term investing, just holding or, you know, just not making trades or trading it on a daily basis, VUG is, is good for that. But they're both good for investing long-term overall um qqq just a little bit more for intraday trading if you're into that if you want to do any of that stuff um, in terms of outstanding shares qqq has more outstanding shares than vug um, that is this change recent recently before qqq had a lot more same with vug but now they've shortened up meaning i guess more people are starting to buy up some shares are getting back into um in this in terms of assets under management the big difference here um, QQQ with almost 161 billion and uh, compared to about nine point or 6.9 billion for, for VOOC. So quite a big difference between both of these in terms of the heavy, the weight of the, their assets of their holdings. So though, although QQ or VOOC has more holdings or more shares, um, you know, QQQ is heavily is more invested or has a lot more dollar value in there. In terms of price to earnings ratio, um, VOOG has about 20.3 relative to QQQ's 22.7. Now, the idea is the lower the better. So that's why this is highlighted. This is kind of on the bigger side. Um, the lower it is, is the better. Um, not too much. Too, I, I don't know too much about price to earnings ratios. Uh, all I know is that part. Um, but if you do know more, um, you know. Uh, educate me <laughs> leave some comments below uh, let me know if uh, what you know about it and, and shed some further light I'd love to know in terms of references and tools I like this this is interesting so th if you want to check out the Morningstar ratings you could just click on that and it'll take you there um, bar chart is another useful tool if we want to check out some of the you know technical some of the other technicals what kind of actions been happening they're they're known to kind of share some volume information on both of these uh, etf database gives a little bit more of an encyclopedia type um, reference uh, to to these sorry to both of these um, both of these funds these etfs and Finviz, you probably hear, maybe you've heard of Finviz, but but if not, um, they give more of a technical analysis side. So they actually plot charts. So if we even click on QQQ, um, it shows like, uh, as you can see here, it shows some lines. So it shows like, okay, what kind of trend lines are forming? And this, they do this automatically. Uh, this isn't me. So it's almost like on um, from a third party. Of course, you know, like I mentioned earlier, trading is risky or even investing is risky. This doesn't give guarantees. It just they're just kind of like guidelines and it shows you that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you can there shows you some other information as well on what's going on with these ETFs. I found these pretty helpful. These are some of the pretty uh, reliable, uh, useful links that I put on. And if you and if you're interested in this one, smart money, this one's pretty cool. So this one shows where or who is who are buying up shares what kind of big players are buying up shares or selling shares? What kind of action is happening in the market? And I find this pretty interesting. This might help you too if you want to you know, make some investment decisions. So if you scroll down here, you can see all the shares. So the red means uh, indicates the closed positions and then green indicates new positions that were open. So it shows you who's buying it or who's selling, the amount of shares that, that have been, um, that they've taken action on. And this kind of gives you an idea um, on, you know, the kind of action, the type of big players who are in the markets. You can do some, you know, background research on these guys. Um, so, for example, Creative Planning, some investor called Creative Planning has bought like 500,074 shares. Uh, you know, that's that's quite significant. That's a lot considering the price of both of these are, you know, of, of say QQQ is almost $300. So that's a big player right there who's making those purchases. So I find this link helpful, uh, pretty helpful. Oops, sorry. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I found, so if, that link is pretty helpful. That is a pretty useful link in terms of finding out, you know, it's a little bit of like, 
it's almost like insider trading or not insider trading or insider kind of like who's buying and selling obviously there's it just gives you a little snapshot there could be other players other other investors in it but overall i found this pretty helpful and this might might help you out too kind of shows like the breadcrumbs of of the big players of the big money there and um you know most of all most importantly if you want to get a hold of again if you want to get a hold of these if if any of these um you can buy it also at a fraction so you don't need to buy like the full um you know the full amount the full uh, what's the price of it the full 300 dollars or the full 2 to 25 uh, share of it you can do fractional shares and that's what the toro toro allows you to buy in fractions which is pretty nice as well and um, on top of that they don't charge any commission so zero commission you get an etf or you get like the, the one of these etfs or even both these etfs at a good price that you want and um yeah i don't think you can go wrong as with with uh, with that it's a pretty good deal if you ask me okay so going down to the chart i like this tool here this is a little more interactive this gives a it just allows you to play around do a couple of different things and right out and you can see here it's pretty accurate so you can see the volume of qqq it's 50.041 million as we can see i'm just gonna see if i can hover it right over here compared to vug's hundred thousand and that's based off of the most recent day uh, so right here right this bar here compared to this bar here big difference in terms of volume and you can even do your own little uh cool here's a little trick that you can use if you want to do your own little measurements and stuff like that if you say want to say see the performance from compare the performance from january 30th you just hold shift click and you can just drag it to wherever you want you can see okay well let's see compared to what's the performance from January 30th of both of these you can see here and then click and it shows you in percentage so it looks like Boog increased by two almost three percent 2.5 percent QQQ by around 3.43 percent and um, yeah so it's pretty cool you can do your own little calculations um, you can you can change the time frame you can use like instead of you don't want to look at the daily you can look at the weekly and it'll show you that if you want to check out the candlesticks you can look at that pretty cool so it's pretty interactive i like these uh, i like this chart over here and if you want to find out more it's by trading view uh these two charts here so you can just click on the link and it'll take you to the full page there now in terms of uh performance uh here's a performance so overall you can see off the bat that qqq has performed uh, quite better overall uh, you know looking at the year-to-date return 7.8 for VU compared to 12.5 uh, for QQQ so quite significant and underneath it shows uh, the dollar amount so say if you invested three thousand um, dollars in that that will be the return that you'll be getting um, based on that initial investment if you say started from the year right since the beginning of the year or since like since since whenever these were actually sorry sorry getting, kind of getting confused confusing myself here um so for example there we go uh since inception you know qqq has performed um a lot more 508 relative to 340 and if you invest at three thousand dollars since its inception that will be your return around eighteen thousand and then thirteen thousand and um i like to go a little bit different you know you can find all of these anywhere else like a three-month return and six months for sure um i rarely see a two-month return i don't know maybe someone wants to maybe i'm curious on like how much will it earn after two months um how much after 18 months maybe what what about since covid what since since that covid crash how about that what's what's if i invested then what will my return be and you can see here for example um both of these are very similar um they're both the same actually 18 months ago which is it's interesting um since 2021 they both been minus 18 um if we look at yeah in the last 18 months but in the last two years if you invested back then um like two years ago then that will be your return, 76% and uh, 70% for those two. And if you want to make your own calculations, I find this tool pretty cool as well. Uh, you click on this link here. There we go. And it's an ETF return calculator. Now, a lot of calculators show like um, show the return just kind of based off of a linear sort of like, okay, if you just put a percentage in. But this one here, you can actually go to the ticker. So you can type in, say, QQQ. It'll take you here. What's the starting amount? Let's say we start with like 3000 and you can choose like a custom date. So if you say I invested since 20, uh, 2013, 
up until now, what would the return be on if I invested in QQQ? And it shows you this, what it would look like, right? So that investment from 2013, of let's say 3,000 would be up to around 12,000, around 12,500, uh, right? So it gives you that return. Uh, shows you that what would what would that be? That would be that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, it's it's pretty it's a pretty cool tool. So you can find that here if you just click on the link on this link right in the performance section. And I also put some really key comparisons. Just put some graphical representation. So this right here, as I mentioned, since the, since the pandemic, this is how these two funds have performed since then. Um, and then since inception, these are how they perform. So you can see the, uh, overall they're pretty similar in terms of of price action, in terms of the action, but they really started breaking apart. QQQ kind of started performing a little bit better a um, little bit after 2016, around 2017. It's so slowly started to break away. So anyways, that's uh, that's it. That's, that's the whole gist of it. If you wanna download the fact sheet, you can simply click here. If you wanna invest in both of these or one of them, um, again, eToro is a good broker. Um, you can do fractional shares. You don't have to get the whole thing. They offer 0% commission, um, so no commission paid. And um, yeah, that's basically, you can't go wrong. And if you wanna copy traders, so if you wanna actually get into copy trading and look at other investors, you can definitely do so. And quite a few of them are invested in QQQ. There are some also in Boot, but you can find out through there as well. Um, in order to find out more about eToro, uh, you simply click but why? But why eToro? Why eToro, guys? Why? Why do we should, should I decide to go with them? Or you can click on um, or you can simply click on the the button as well. Um, that'll take you there. But uh, here here's a here's a reason why, and then uh, here it lists all the reasons. Um, what other reviewers have said. Uh, again, I like condensing everything, putting everything in one place, so you don't have to go around searching. Okay, what are other people saying? Um, what's available out there, and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so all this information is here. If you're if you're not convinced and you find out want to find out more about eToro, you can definitely do that and go here and um, you know leave a comment, uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you want if you like more of this and you want to be you know stay in touch and uh, check out the link below. It takes you to all this uh, cool stuff, these neat neat uh, useful tools and resources. Anyways, trade simple and uh, take care. Bye.